How are you this morning? On this beautiful late December day. It is, it is a great day to be in the house of the Lord, though. Amen? Amen. <laughs> There's a song in the air this morning, friends. A song that is uh, reminding us and calling us to a, a time of hope and peace and joy and love as we make our way towards the Christmas that we have been long awaiting for in this year of 2020. This morning we are joined not only by those who gather in this sanctuary, this safe space, uh, but also online and virtually as we broadcast this service, live stream this service via Facebook. And it will be available uh, for you to go back and watch again and to share with others this is a great season to be inviting folks to the life of the church and to hear the good news of the birth of the Savior. There are a couple of announcements I want to draw your attention to this morning as we begin. First, to thank those of you who have given poinsettias in honor and memory of loved ones. We're grateful for those as they beautify the sanctuary for this week's services. Everything we do this week will be live streamed uh, in addition to being um, available in the sanctuary. Uh, and that includes on Christmas Eve, there are still some seats available for in-person participation in our Christmas Eve service, 7 p.m. on Thursday night, but you must register in advance and the deadline for that is tomorrow, uh, close of business. Uh, and you can do that by calling the office or registering online via our website. Tomorrow night, uh, we will have um, what I think is uh, it's, it's atypical for Trinity Church, we will be having a longest night service. Some of you may have heard of this as a blue Christmas worship. Tomorrow is the day of the winter solstice. It's the shortest day and the longest night of the year. And in this season of loss, uh, we've lost loved ones, we've lost jobs. And for some of us, we feel like we have lost an entire year of our lives in 2020. So we'll gather tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, virtually, online, uh, to um, participate in a time of acknowledging our grief and claiming our confidence and hope in the coming birth of Christ. And so I hope that you will uh, join us for that and invite others who you think might find that service meaningful. Today will be the last in-person worship uh, on a Sunday. We will gather on Thursday night uh, but this will be the last in-person worship until our plan is January 10th. Uh, after we gather several times this week, we are going to take a little respite uh, until, the, um, until the Epiphany Sunday, January 10th. That is our hope and our plan, all of which, of course, is subject to uh, conditions in the community with COVID-19. Friends, I'm glad that you are here this morning. I am grateful for the participation of all of our musicians today and for Pat's leadership. Will you join me in prayer? Dear people of Christ, in this joyful season of Christmas, let us prepare to hear once again the song of the angels and in heart and mind go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, the birth of our Savior. Will you join me? Let us pray for the needs of the whole world and all God's people for peace on earth, and for love and unity within Christ's church. Let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, all who are sick, all who mourn, the lonely, those who do not know love, and all who do not know or love the Lord. And let us remember all who rejoice with us, both here on earth and in heaven, with whom we are one in the Lord. We offer these prayers and praises to our Father in heaven and the words that Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. 
Our first lesson this morning comes from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end, and he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. second lesson is from the 11th chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 4 and verse 6. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. The wolf shall also dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them.
Our third lesson is from Micah, chapter 5 through 5. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose, or, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when the who is in labor, who gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd the flock in the strength of the Lord, in the, the majority name of the Lord of his God, and they will live securely, and then his, his greatness will reach the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. The fourth lesson is from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 35 and 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. 
and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the one to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. The fifth lesson is from Luke, the second chapter, verses one through seven. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for him or them in the inn.
Our sixth lesson comes from Luke 2, 8 through 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. The seventh lesson
The seventh lesson is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who was born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Friends, let us pray. Almighty God, you who gave your only begotten Son to take away our sins, grant that we, being reborn and made your children through your grace, 
may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Friends, this has been the most uh, wonderful, non-traditional, traditional cantata that I think I've ever experienced. Uh, and I want to acknowledge, first off, um, our musicians, Megan and Martha and Rianne and Randall, the Reese family, Anna and Rachel and um, Brentley over their own percussion, our ringers today, Ruth, Jane, Pat, and Mary, and Turner Wilkes, who is our technical director, and of course, our director, Pat Madison. So I'm gonna offer a blessing, and they're gonna play one final number, Joy to the World. I'm gonna ask you to stand for all of that. And then I have one final request, and this actually comes from Pat and the musicians, that when Joy to the World is concluded, that you not come and hover around them and congratulate them and thank them for being here. Uh, you can applaud again at the end of Joy to the World if you want, but our ushers are gonna help you exit the way you came in through the doors in the rear, uh, remembering to keep your social distance on your way out. And thank you for that. Friends, receive this blessing. May the Lord Jesus fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Friends, please stand as you are able.